The first tip is to have relatively short lines so that your kite has a smaller distance to travel up to 12. The kite will also deeper more, so it will be easier to hold your edge. It will probably also have more speed and consequently more lift when it is at 12. The second tip is to have optimal power in the kite. You mustn't be underpowered by having a small kite, otherwise it will be complicated to come into the tack with speed and maintain the lift on the foil. Nor must you be overpowered as you might get pulled too much while lifting the kite and this can make it a lot harder. Finally, the last tip is to ideally have a foil kite, REM air kite. This will make it easier to learn how to tack simply because for a tube kite, the point at 12 will be here, so not exactly above your head. Whereas a foil kite will have a bigger wind window and the point at 12 will be over your head. It is also good to know that the best rotation axis will be there. For example, if I'm on port and want to end up on startboard, I will be able to turn perfectly under my kite, whereas on a tube kite, the kite will be a bit further behind and will pull you backwards, making it trickier to have a smooth rotation. Furthermore, this will give you more and constant lift all the way through the tack. Now I will go through the basics for learning a foiling tack. It is quite a technical transition as it demands a perfect synchronization between both the foil and kite movements. They will work together. The kite mustn't slow down the foil and the foil mustn't slow down the kite. On port, for instance, as my kite progressively goes up to 12, my route will also progressively alter by heading up into the wind direction. Kite handling is very important. The second thing to know is that while the kite is going up to 12, it must stay on the edge of the wind window. If you want to dive your kite harder in its new direction on startboard once it passes, 12 because you're looking for more power. You can do this, but only at the end of the wind window. Now it's important to talk about board movement. Let's assume that the wind is coming from the camera. You are on board, canted over in order to hit further upwind while the kite is moving up to 12. You should progressively push with your toes so that when you are head to wind, the board is completely flat. And then you change your feet and make the board cant over again by this time pushing with your heels onto start board. I will show you again. I'm kiting on board. I push with my toes. Boom! I've turned it to wind. My board is flat and then I sail onto start board. If you had to freeze the picture, I do insist that during your tack, neither the foil nor the kite should stop moving. But if we freeze the picture, when you are completely head to wind, the wind is coming from the camera, you must have both feet in the foot strap, the board must be flat, the kite must be at 12 and your throw must be aligned with the axis between your belly button and your chin like this. For both stacks. So, as I was saying, the throw must be in the axis all the way through tack. So, on startboard, you're going to be holding your edge like this. You will end up with the throw always in front of you like this. And then here, when you head to wind, the throw is here. And then I sail onto the other tack. This is a good reference to see if my kite is in the right tempo. So, if your kite is too late, you will want to go over there, but the throw will be the other side. If your kite is too early, you will be end up like this, but your kite will already be in the other direction.
So it's very important to always have the throw in front of you during the transition. We will look at this video in slow motion and break down the steps to completing a foiling tack. I'm on starboard, going upwind and I keep speed before the transition. I move the kite up progressively and I can let go of my front end to help me go through the wind axis. I hold my edge like this and I head into wind. My kite continues to go up. I push on my toes to flatten the board. I put my back foot in the front foot strap. My board is flat and my kite is at 12. I continue to pull on my back end which becomes my front end. I put my front foot at the back of the board. I continue to put my kite down and I come out of the tack. On a reach on port, I don't cling onto the bar, I let my kite breathe. Once my kite is steady, I can accelerate, cant the board over more and untwist the lines by spinning the bar. Now for attack from port to start board, we will look at the slow motion. I maintain my speed, I start pulling on my back hand, right hand, the kite moves up. I shoot out a bit so that I don't get pulled towards kite. I continue holding my edge with my bum, almost touching the water. I push on my toes to flatten the board. The board is flat. Both my feet are in the front strap with the kite at 12. I can sail onto the other tack by bearing away slightly. My board is still a bit flat to start off with, punching the board over. Steady myself onto startboard, let my kite accelerate and build speed by counting over more. Now we will look what to do with the bar by watching the slow mo of this video. I am on port, my bar is on the tension spot. Also known as the sweet spot, it is an area on the throw where the tension is enough to generate pull in the front lines, which allows us to kite or to hang comfortably of the lines. My kite goes up and I shit out to depower my kite. It's moving up to 12. I stay shitted out and when it gets to 12, I shit in to come back to this sweet spot to be suspended. I change my feet and sail into the new direction. We will analyze this same video in slow-mo and focus on the kite and foil movements. I am on startboard, my kite is on the edge of the wind window. I put it up progressively by shooting out. We can see it going up on the edge of the wind window. The kite is at 12, the board is flat. I continue to put my kite down. The nose of the board is pointing a bit further downwind and I continue on to port. This time we will analyze attack from port to startboard. We will concentrate on the roots of the foil by looking at the wake of the foil in the water. We can see that as the kite is going up, I am heading into wind, but I am doing an arc of circle rather than a right angle. This enables me to come out on startboard with a smooth route, which allows me to maintain speed. I will now talk about the five most frequent errors. The first one is kite timing, the movement of the kite. It is often the case that my kite is either too late or too early. In order to better understand this, we will look at an exercise I did on the beach. I haven't passed the wind axis yet. My kite is already on the other side, so I get pulled backwards. I try to go into the other tack, but my kite is still behind me, so slows me down. I progressively head into the wind. The kite goes up progressively as I am moving as well, which means that it doesn't slow me down. I can easily start walking again in the new direction. The second error is due to the movement of the kite. Frequently, when you pass the axis of the wind, and when you change your feet and put them both in the front foot strap, 
the rider can get lost and can stop pulling on the back end which makes the kite stop at 12. For example, I'm on port, I will pull on my back end, here I'm at 12 so I will shit in and stay like this. So when I want to go in the other direction my kite will stay stuck at 12 and I will fall. So don't forget that when you shit in to find the sweet spot on the throw, continue to pull on the back end so that the kite goes in the opposite direction. The third error is to send the kite too hard to 12 or shit in too much making it impossible to hold your age. On port for instance, I will throw my kite too hard and get pulled downwind. The kite will go in the opposite direction, the lines will become slack and the kite might fall out of the sky. Therefore, it is very important to hold your edge and resist the power of the kite while sending it to 12. The fourth error that is very frequent concerns the tilt of the board after having passed 12. So here I'm on port, usually my board should be flat and it should turn into the new direction. But sometimes it's possible that I didn't push a note on my toes and that the board still ends up like this while I'm in the other direction. So even if you push very hard on your heels, it can be probably too late and it can be also dangerous if your feet stay in the foot strap and you get pulled back. Keep in mind that you need to push on your toes progressively to end up with a flattened board. The final error is managing in the height of foil. You have probably been told that you must press on your back leg to gain height on the foil when going through the wind axis. Personally, I don't advise you to do this unless you have a very good level or are kiting in very light conditions. This will unbalance you more than anything. My advice is for you to find the correct timing in the tack so that you have an outlift thanks to the speed that you maintain with the correct timing of the kite, so that you end up on the front of the foil while conserving the same height all throughout the tack. The board will be high and you won't be unbalanced, so it's useless to push too much on your back leg as it may potentially make the foil come out water and make you fall. This marks an end to my tutorial. I hope that this video helped you see things more clearly.